Hello, I'm Mike Swan, uh, been part of the GWCT advisory team since 1982. Uh, and when I started all that time back, uh, nearly everything that arrived on the farm arrived in five gallon, 25 litre tin drums. Uh, and my predecessors were absolute experts at using those leftover drums for all sorts of things in relation to game management. But in particular, the thing that I was taught about right at the start, and which I think in many ways hasn't been superseded, is the five gallon drum as a pheasant and partridge feeder. Um, and after lots of experimentation with different sorts of ways of uh, getting the birds to feed from them, what they came up with in the end was slots in the base of the drum. These days there are no scra uh, scrap drums available or very, very few, and if they are, they're very thin and they don't actually last very long. So I'm buying brand new tin drums like this one, uh, reasonably heavy gauge, it's half millimeter thick steel, and then knocking slots in the base of it for myself. So hammer and cold chisel. Three slots about an inch and a half long, four or five centimetres, and about the right width for the wheat to come out of. So the slots at the bottom, now filled with corn, uh, easy for pheasants and partridges to pack corn out. Uh, and if they spill a grain or two on the ground, they mop it up almost straight away. So there's no great pool of corn lying on the ground underneath to attract rats, um, which for me is a very important part of the story. All of this careful arrangement, of course, um, doesn't take us very far if the rats can get underneath and reach up and, and collect the corn. So the thing is set up somewhere around about knee height or just a little bit below. Uh, it's probably um, between 40 and 45 centimetres. Hanging it from a tripod like this in an open situation, uh, even if a rat runs up here and down there, when it gets onto the top of the drum, it can't get in because it's a tin drum and it can't gnaw its way through. And if it goes down the side, it's gonna fall off and onto the ground long before it gets anywhere near any corn. In this part of the world, we've got quite a lot of deer and deer will come and knock them about and try and get some corn out of them. And in the process, they knock the tripod over. So you can just see my bit of rope round the sides here, which just stops the legs from splaying and makes it much harder for the deer to knock the thing over completely. If they don't knock it over completely, they usually get bored because again, they don't get enough corn out of there for it to be of any value to them. The one disadvantage of hanging them like this is that water tends to collect on the lid here or run down the handle and into the, the blister that supports the handle. And so the two places that rust out most quickly is the top of the lid or these little supports. So what I've done is painted it black with black bitumastic paint to help to try and reduce the weight at which the lid rusts. And I've also drilled a neat little hole just there so that the blister drains, hopefully we'll find that these second generation of new drums will last a bit longer than the last lot. So this is one that's been going for about five years. Uh, and as you can see, rusting on the top of the lid and also the rust on the, uh, in the blister or whatever. This one's still holding together okay, probably got another year or so before uh, lose it loses its, its value. Another great thing about these feeders is that they're relatively small and lightweight, so it's dead easy to pick them up and move them. Uh, and indeed, we do recommend that rather than leaving them in the same place, we move them uh, each time they get filled. Um, the idea behind that being, uh, one, there's less um, chance of rats finding them quite so easily, and the other is that there's less build-up of parasites underneath the feeder that might infect uh, the birds when they come and feed there. So I've hung this one in the middle of a hedge um, where it can be uh, easily available to the pheasants and partridges, uh, but with a thought in particular for partridges, that they're less likely to be spotted by a predator like a sparrowhawk uh, and they've got more escape cover than if they were out in the open.